But let's see what game number two is going to bring us and what map as we go to Polypoint 1.22. All right, let's start off that game. And once I get the player position set up, we will be able to get on into the main screen. So why did our two players spawn? We have a turn. All right, let's swap on into the main screen. Spawning down here in the bottom right-hand corner of Polypoid, it is Rush, our yellow Terran. And up here in the top left-hand corner, it is Hero, our red Zerg. Now, what I'm curious about is how is Hero going to deal with, you know, that four looks really awkward. I always like kind of differ back and forth between if I want to put it's four o'clock or five o'clock. But how is Hero going to deal with what Rush did in game number one? Now, at least on game number one, uh, it was an old map. Rush went for an old style. I say old map, but it's really, you know, a couple months old. Uh, but this is Polypoid. This is a map that we have um, on the ladder actively right now. It's kind of being used in a lot of games. So maybe Hero is a little bit more prepared for whatever Rush could be, prepared, uh, could be setting up here. And Rush, overall, went for a very nice build on game number one. Um, as I said before, you know, it was Escalade. That was a very popular style. It was to go mech, but then it became fun to go mech into bio. Uh, and Rush just played that perfectly. Now, Hero went for what looks like a nine pool into extractor trick so now we're opening up this map very aggressive uh we're not scouting though so um actually this is kind of weird are we gonna have three larva in time because that second larva just popped i think actually no I might be wrong i mean i would expect someone like here to, yeah okay so here had a perfectly timed out of course why was i why did i ever doubt um, so we got a nine pool going into just immediately zergling just going to put on that pressure and meanwhile on the other side of the map Rush is getting a barracks up uh, is going to get the scout off as soon as the zergling really are going to get actually, I think the zergling might be able to dodge this uh, but we have no scouting and it's cross map okay no okay the SCV is going to see this So, I mean, at this point, all Terran has to do is just play a little defensive. And this is interesting. Rush is sending out a second SCV to scout counter to the Lings. And this is kind of really important for Terran as well. You really need to know what is going to be the follow-up. Wow, that was an immediate cross map. That is lucky. Uh, and that'll force Rush to make that command center inside the base. We haven't really gone for anything else. We didn't go for a, a second barracks or anything. Pulls a couple SCVs off the line. And does leave a little bit more to guess for the Terran. Now, it's not going to be that much to guess, though. Because Rush did sneak out that second SCV. I think we're sending a Zergling back to go deal with it. Yeah, now we see that there's a second SCV that's going to come in and scout. But there's going to be a drone over here to protect uh, the ramp. Lair coming down. And the lair is important. But really what's most important with the lair is what's going to come out of the lair. Now, if there's going to be a hydroden going down before the lair is done, then obviously, you know, uh, hydroden lair is pretty indicative of, of lurkers. Oh, man, you cannot let that SCV in there. Not the worst, but, you know, really not ideal. Now here comes the rest of the Zergling coming in here. It looks like we didn't go for speed either. We are saving a lot of gas up now. Hopefully going to clean up that, uh, that SCP. Okay, there we go. The lair does go down. It looks like it's probably going to be Spire since we saved up so much uh, gas. And a couple of Marines just looking around. They know that all the uh, Lings were pulled back there. So I think those uh, Marines were just like for any potential... Uh, Overlords that were hiding out where they shouldn't have been. Second barracks and refinery coming down with the academy. So we're just going into very standard two base academy. And this is great play to counter. Um, nine pool or fast layer attack or really anything. Uh, especially when there's only two hatcheries. 
This actually allows for the Pateran to uh, potentially put in some earlier pushes before the Spire kicks in. Uh, since there's already so many Marines that are out here, we're going to go for a bunker at the front as well. It's very difficult for Zerg to make enough larva to go for a massive Ling invasion, as well as uh, make enough drones to really kind of propel themselves into the mid game. So the two Rax Academies is, is a nice balance that allows for the uh, the Terran to get enough tech out, enough preparation, and enough just units to survive either or, as well as getting into a good state for when the Spire does finish up. So Spire is about to finish up. Second Gas is about to finish as well uh, is finished as well here for uh, Hero, and Rush is just looking to play a very defensive game. Your cross map for a Zerg, there's not really that much of an opportunity to push out uh, unless you go and get really lucky with like a 15 CC and they go for a two hatch and blah, 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 blah. But even then, the, the rush distance is just way too long. So I like this call here from uh, Rush to play it a little bit more close to home and just play defensive and get that advantage. Get plus one weapons, get all the upgrades, and then push out when you have enough of a bio ball and maybe you've uh, held off the mutas long enough. And that is what Hero is kind of playing to as well, it looks like. We've got a third base coming up here. We've got the gas already started before the third base is even done. Pushing out a little bit with these Marines just to kind of ward away these Zergling. Um, and potentially put a little bit of pressure here on the Zerg. Again, like, it's going to be difficult for Rush to, in order to do, uh, I think, a lot of damage. Unless Hero really gets caught off guard here. What we really need at this point is couple of uh, kills on the marines and that'll pretty much ward that away i think uh we don't have lurker tech i don't think just yet yeah we have no hydras or anything to block this up uh, we have no sunkins either and with no sunkins this makes it really difficult here for hero because if hero fluffs the fence this could actually end of the game but on the other side of the map though back at uh rush's base we did get the factory on the way here um, we have no other tech structures out here for Hero. So Hero's really just banking on these Milas to do damage. I probably are getting a plus one carapace or weapons on here. And I'll click and check. Yeah, it's a plus one carapace. So we're going to be mostly all in on mutas, it looks like. I don't think we're going to be going for many drones behind this. I think it's just going to be pure mutas and really punishing Rush. Uh, now, if Rush is able to get into a good state, we get a couple of science missiles out, this is going to be really difficult for Hero. But Hero's job right now is to pretty much just contain the map and flood mutas to a point that there's not really an opportunity here for Rush to get across the map easily. Ooh. And I really like this positioning here from Rush. It's like, normally mutas try to dog in and out from this little area where it's uh, difficult to see. Uh, but Hero is unable to do that because Rush is just so out in the middle. And we did get that plus one carapace. It looks like finished up. Nope. We're just playing this a little bit difficult, uh, a little, little, little crazy beforehand. We're exchanging mutas constantly. Uh, now, here's my question. When is the Queen's Nest going to go down and we're going to go all in here on Guardians? Or maybe we just stay on mutas. Uh, Rush is now getting up now, finally up to a bunch of barracks. And we did get the first starport now down here as well. And we're actually getting a factory with shop. I would assume at this point Rush knows that this is all in on mutas. So we're getting siege tanks. So it looks like we might actually go for uh, what's known as a Hanbong timing. Or one of the Hanbong timings. So we get a couple science vessels um, and a siege tank and just break the third. I don't know if that's going to be super effective here. And I really like this rush. He's taking a lot of damage on the Marine count. And Hero is absolutely on top of the production. This actually might be game here. There's no missile turrets over here. I don't know what rush was prepared for. But it wasn't for this. And now more mutas filtering in. We don't have any Marines. We don't have any protection here. We're trying to get missile turrets down. There's just way too many mutas at this point. And I think, yeah, that's game. I don't, like, I just... I was talking so casually because I didn't expect that to happen at all, and I guess neither did Rush. And it looks like we're going to have Hero even it up 1-1 one, one. as we go on into game number three. Polypoid going on over here to Hero's favorite. And that's just really a difficult spot. I just, I'm just a little bit confused how Hero uh, was able to do that without Rush kind of being prepared for that. Typically, in that situation, 
a lot of Terrans will just throw down like 80 missile turrets and just be prepared for that and rush to missile, uh, rush to science vessel. It looked like Rush was taking some time. Really preparing for, you know, a very strong push going on into like the 10 minute mark. But uh, we didn't do that. Instead, we opted to go for um, less defense, and that kind of cost us. Uh, you have to be really careful against Mutas, especially having the ball of uh, Terran out in the middle of the map. All right, so let me get the players in position real quick here. 